One of the major changes in our 2005 revision to our programs was in the way we address bleeding. This was the result of the first aid guidelines process, which was the first real evidence review of what we do in first aid, what the data shows that works and what doesn't work. In the past, we controlled bleeding with a combination of techniques, direct pressure on the bleeding site, elevation, and pressure points. As part of the evidence evaluation, we looked at does the evidence show that each one of those works. On direct pressure, the evidence was very clear. It works. It's a highly effective technique. Interestingly enough, when we looked at the evidence, there is actually no evidence to support elevation. And there are reports of dangers in elevation of moving an injured extremity or other body part. Lastly, with regard to pressure points, there is some small evidence that pressure points work, but they're only from studies that use an operating room and use the device to apply pressure on a specific point at such a level that we would not be able to do it with your own hands. So putting that all together, we know direct pressure is highly effective and works. We know elevation has not been shown to be of benefit and may be of harm. And while there's some evidence that pressure points work, it's not a way that the average rescuer can apply it. There's one overriding piece of evidence that we also took into account. That when people went on to techniques such as elevation or pressure point, they almost universally released the direct pressure. So what we learned is people were using two techniques, elevation and pressure points, that were not been proven to be helpful at the expense of the technique that worked. As a result, we've gone with the easy to teach, proven technique that works, direct pressure as the way to save a life from bleeding.